欢迎收听《极限白日梦》，我是节目主持人 Irene。在这里，我们透过深入探访全球各地的户外运动玩家，分享他们挑战极限、透过户外运动探索世界的故事，让我们获得旅行的灵感与激发内心的冒险精神，开启一场属于自己的极限白日梦。在上一集 ，Miles 跟我们分享了 Namba 这个二世谷登山车协会的由来，以及 Twin Peaks Bike Park 的介绍之后，这一集呢 ，Miles 要跟我们分享他们真正的极限白日梦是什么。除此之外 ，Irene 询问 Miles， 要是有人想要跟他们一样的话，那我们要怎么样踏出第一步？然后 Miles 的回应呢，其实。感觉除了在建登山车之外呢，好像也是在分享一个创业的过程。那我觉得那一段呢，大家可以反复收听，应该可以有非常多的收获。那我们就马上来听听我们的下集采访吧。Bikes, back to bikes. Sorry. <laughs> Let's say the next five years. Because you told me some really cool plan in the future. Basically, anywhere you want to go, you could go on a bike. You know, you could go on a mountain bike, and eighty percent of it would be on trails. That's that's what I want Niseko to become. So you can bike from Kuchan to Hirafu, or Hirafu to Niseko, or Niseko to Kyogoku or Makari or Rusutsu, and most of the time you're on trails. Wow,、uh, that's that's kind of kind of what I want us to to have here. And in, in the kind of near term, we will finish building in Twin Peaks. We'll probably have thirty kilometers when we're done, roughly.、Uh, and then beyond that, we hope to cooperate with the resorts on both sides of us to、um, to build a fully integrated area where you can you can start in Hanazono, you can go ride there, and then mountain bike through Twin Peaks, and then go get lunch somewhere, and then take the lift back up in Hirafu and. You can basically go anywhere by bike. I think we'll start in that immediate area,、yeah. cooperating with those resorts. But also beyond the resorts,、um, I mean, there's nothing more iconic about Niseko than Mount Yote. And a big dream would be to have a loop that goes all the way around the base of Mount Yote.、It、could be like 50 kilometers of single track potentially.、Yeah. Some of it would be double track on existing gravel, but we want to connect the entire.、Um, The entire Mount Yote area, and also provide economic benefit to those towns that you know aren't Niseko Town and aren't Kuchan Town. Though we do want to support, of course, the place that I, I live in Kuchan. I want to support Kuchan, but、um, we also want to bring、uh, positive economic impact to places like Kyogoku, and they're at the foot of Mount Yote, and Makari, they're at the foot of Mount Yote, but、uh, they don't necessarily see the same amount of of tourism benefit and other trickle down benefits.、Uh, As as Niseko and Kuchan, so yeah, the Yote 360 loop trail would be awesome.、Uh, so sick. And then beyond that, like it, you can just if I was just to completely dream, you know, we'd have trails that go all the way from one end of Hokkaido to the other. We'd have trails where you can you can bike everywhere and basically do bike packing, but on single track wilderness.、Um, that's but that you know that could be twenty thirty years away. That type of stuff. Uh, but definitely in the near term, getting Twin Peaks up and、uh, perfecting it, having more people out out there riding, and then、um, just in the same way that we were talking about restaurants, we'll see. Well, there's success here. We want to do that. We want to work with the resorts, and、we'll, we want to bring the mountain bikers. Like, we have this community we're, we're building. We want to work with them to help them build out their trails and to help them make the best investment possible. By building proper world class trails, yeah,、um, yeah, you are talking about like Hokkaido. It's like a... twice big of Taiwan.、Uh, <laughs> It's hard to imagine, like from this side to the other side. Yeah, that that's like very、uh, pie in the sky. I don't know if we'll ever achieve that,、um, and that's also well beyond Niseko. So we're the Niseko Area Mountain Bike Association. So、but、I think that you already done the first one, which that would require a lot of、um, cooperation will... with、yeah. so many different stakeholders. But yeah, I think to focus on the Niseko area because we're Namba, of course.、Um, yeah, the resorts around us,、uh, the Yote Loop,、um, and then maybe doing a rails to trails project. It's quite likely they'll remove. Well, they're going to be removing the local train、mm. once they build the bullet train, the Shinkansen. Oh yeah. And we want to take the old、um, train line and build a bike path. So then you could bike from Kuchan Town to Niseko, or you could bike from Kuchan to Otaru, or you could. Take all this on on a bike path, 
Uh, I don't know if it'd be single track mountain biking, but some type of bike path. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, if we would do the full distance or if we'd focus our effort on Niseko, but it's easy to make these dreams and easy to see the potential for all of this. And so, you know, we're, we're as an organization, we're not even two years old yet. So, um, it's really easy for us, just like a two year old <laughs> to, to dream a lot and to think about all these different possibilities. And, um, I think, yeah, if things continue with the same level of success and support and, um, funding that we've had with twin peaks, uh, Niseko is going to be an incredible destination even next year. Um, if we finish the full proposed 13 kilometers, let's say we have 26 kilometers next year of yeah. free mountain biking trails, like 26 K is, is a lot. That's several days of riding for most people. Yeah. Uh, especially with the elevation gain, like you can yeah, easily it's not on the road. <laughs> yeah. You, it's you, on the trail. You can easily, um, do that. Like that, that's hours and hours and hours of riding. Unless you're really wanting to go out and do a big day and kind of you know, have a big <laughs> pedal. That's, yeah. that's many days of riding for people, or you could ride the same trail like five times in one day. And if you had to e-bike, for example, or if you're just really <laughs> fit, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, again, it, it's just many, many days of riding. Um, and that alone is huge because it's not just people coming to ride one trail. It's people to come ride a, a region and then the region gets expanded through the, I'm being a bit repetitive, but region gets expanded through the, um, the resorts and other, other public trail projects eventually like the Yote loop. So yeah. that's, yeah, it's kind of the, the dream. Anything you can think of, that's kind of where, <laughs> yeah, they where we're thinking right now. We're, yeah. we're, we're all little kids when we talk about bikes. I think bikes make people, bikes make me feel like a little kid when I'm riding a bike. And so it's easy to bring that same like playfulness and like excitement. And mm. like, oh, wow, oh, wow. Imagine if we did this and how cool would it be if we did that? And, <laughs> but that's how, that's how Twin Peaks happened. It was yeah, just, that's how we imagine started, if we did right? this yeah. and they're like, oh my God, we've started that. We, we've opened this. There's people riding this. There's people enjoying this and coming out of the trails with giant smiles on their faces. And we're like, wow, how else do we keep giving these people things that make them happy? I think like, uh, especially like me just riding the bike the other days and then to hear all this story behind it and make me feel like Phew. it's just more than a bike park you know that's the spirit behind it and all the people with all those passion and not because of the profit and all they're thinking about like give it back to the community and to the locals mm. just saying this is not just the end but a start from where you want it to go yeah i mean opening the bike park people are like congratulations you did it and we're like no we've just started yeah. uh <laughs> We've literally just started the, yeah. it's, it's, it started from the 16th. It wasn't like, oh, you, you've done, con you've done it. Congrats. It's like, yeah, like end. No, okay, it's we, just a start. We have, yeah, yeah. Now we have maintenance. We've got education to think about in terms of, you know, not riding wet trails and things like that to help with erosion issues and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, also just ex with expansion, with growing the area, this is just the first thing. This is, we haven't even finished this project yet. We just opened a section of it. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's all from here. It all, it's all just starting now. Wow. It's really exciting. Yeah. Because I also share like how I ride the bike in the park and then share on our social media. And there's uh, people from Taiwan, they look at that and asking like why we cannot have this kind of the free park, especially it's for free and we really, um, welcome the everyone in any level because mm. one of your posts was like a little girl on a push bike. Yeah. <laughs> Even the girls on the push bike is welcome to assess this park. Yeah. And we want more people like that. We want more kids. We want more people that have never ridden a bike before to get out there and experience it. Cause it's, it's not just for people that, you know, chug Red Bull, um, and <laughs> jump off things and listen to metal or something like that. It's, yeah. Mountain biking is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It can be that, you know, if you want to do free ride stuff and find the biggest stuff to drop off of, that's great. But, um, we're trying to provide something that's more accessible yeah. and, uh, trying to really push that through social media and through our brand image. Like, yeah, we do have stuff that's exciting and challenging. Like, uh, on opening weekend, we had two world cup downhill racers here. Whoa. One of them had a broken hand, but, um, the other one uh, was here riding and he's like jumping into berms and doing all sorts of really crazy stuff. Um, to me, it's crazy to him. It's just like, he's just having a fun time on the bike, <laughs> but it's, it's like, we're trying to build a place where someone like that yeah. 
can have a really awesome time pushing themselves and riding trails that don't exist like this in Japan or really in Asia, I think. Or if they do, well, they do, but it's quite limited.、Um, certainly not free. <laughs>、uh, and so we're trying to provide something like for the core experienced mountain biker, but that person's already mountain biking. That person already knows about this.、Uh, mm. how, do you, how do you get someone that's never been on a bike before, or you're not a mountain biker, they've never tried riding single track, how do you make them feel comfortable?、Um, How do you make a dad with his kid have a good time out there, a mom with their kid out, have a good time out there? And it's by, you know, maybe the parents just want to see the, the smile on their kid's face and that's enough for them. Or maybe they want to ride together or whatever. But we're trying to provide all these different ways for these people to have their own experiences out there.、Mm-hmm. And we want those experiences to be positive. And that's, yeah, again, beginners getting out there and、uh, riding the skills loop and riding the berms for the first time and feeling. Comfortable and confident, and that sense of accomplishment、yeah. uh, of like, oh,、I've, I did it. I conquered that section of trail.、Um, and yeah, a lot, of, a lot of our expansion for next year is focused on the beginner rider. So、mm-hmm. we'll have、um, hopefully、uh, some, oh, I, I, I'm not sure what I can say. <laughs> okay, I'm not on the trails、so、committee,、secret. but we'll have, we'll have hopefully some,、uh, a lot of beginner focused、uh, okay. additional sections where people can go out and have. The best time and ride sections of trail that are really designed for the beginner.、Um, but, you know, an, an advanced rider could probably still have fun out there. They're just they're looking at the trail differently, but it's, it's really targeted on the beginner experience. Because,、um, yeah, right now we have probably the best, I guess, beginner flow tra- trail we have is, is really the, the flow trail. e z o or not e z o it's、um, Easy Rider. And that's a blue trail. So it's, we're using the IMBA, which is International Mountain Bike Association. We're using their trail rating standards. And that's similar to an American ski resort where green is easy, blue is intermediate, black is advanced, and double black is expert. So we only have a blue downhill trail. We have the green skills loop, but the blue trail,、um, it's, it's good because it's a flow trail and anyone can ride it. And actually,、yeah. that picture of the girl on the push bike, that's on the flow trail. So、oh, she's、really? on a blue trail. But,、um, We'd like to provide something that's even easier because the flow trail is great because a beginner rider, they can ride and stay on the ground the whole time and have a good time.、Um, a, an expert rider, they're jumping sections that a beginner rider would roll. So they're doubling sections. An intermediate rider, it's actually really hard. <laughs> I'm an intermediate rider and、uh, I've got speed in the corners and I've got speed on the straights, but I don't have jumping confidence.、Um, and so I, I, that trail is really challenging. It's fun. But that also provides that sense of progression. There, you know, it's even as like a, a, you know, a decent mountain biker, I'm still challenged by this trail. And I still have these moments where I'm like, oh, I, like- I hit that corner really well, finally. Like, I've never, <laughs> I never really figured out the braking or how to、yeah. set up for this, or, oh, I finally cleared that double or、yeah, that type of stuff. So, yeah. but yeah, I think the, the future trails that we've got planned, there's a lot of areas focused on progression and providing that, like, Well, I've done the skills loop. I feel comfortable there. Now I want to go downhill, but I don't want to ride a blue trail. I want to ride a green trail. I want to ride something that's really friendly. And that even if they would probably be fine on the blue trail,、um, a green trail, just because it's green, gives them confidence. In Taiwan, at the same time, there w a s beginners and there w a s、uh, advanced, and maybe they will run into each other、mm-hmm. and there were or people that get injured.、Mm-hmm. They might sue you.、Mm. We have, we have insurance. <laughs> we, oh, you have, have insurance? We have liability insurance. But beyond, beyond just like wanting to be covered with liability, yeah, we're,、um, we have a lot of signage out there. So we've, we've really invested in signage that、uh, hopefully enhances the user experience. And again, we're, we're year one and everything, nothing's necessarily perfect, but we're, it's all progress. It's all just getting better year by year. So year one, we have signage and it's got a trail map, it's got a system of like, Guidelines and rules.、Uh, and then also out on the trails, there are various signs that、um, you know, show you the rating of the trail you're on. Or the, if you're looking at a trail, you're like, maybe I should go down that one. And you see, oh, it's a black diamond. Maybe not. Or、mm. um, oh, I, I, I want to ride a black diamond. That's what I'm looking for. So it's got the trail signage, like trail names, information for other trail users. Because one of our trails does allow、um, hikers and trail runners and mountain bikers to kind of coexist. But、yeah, definitely,、um, education will be a, a, something we will always be working on. Right now, I think our focus is on、um, 
I guess more trail preservation than anything. Right. So not riding wet trails is a, is a big thing for us right now. Yeah. And um, would you like to like um, explain why do yeah. not ride on the wet trails? So I mean, it, it'll depend on everyone where they where they live and the types of dirt that is available where they are and the types of trail surfaces and all that stuff. But um, here, because we're riding machine built trails, like every, it's, everything's been compacted and smoothed for the most part. Um, riding wet trails, basically the dirt gets soft when it's wet, right? Mm. And, um, tires grip into that dirt, but they'll also pull some of it out or they mash a certain section down and that creates a rut. That rut holds water. More people start riding around that. The rut gets wider and it develops a puddle. Then you have erosion issues and, um, it, it just, it creates maintenance and, uh, erosion issues for us. And again, we're in a preservation forest. Um, we're not cutting down trees and erosion and soil, uh, erosion issues are, are very important to us and also important to the landowners. <laughs> so we have to, we have yeah. to look after the, the property that we're very lucky enough to have access to. So not riding wet trails, um, is, is huge because yeah, it prevents all these erosion issues from happening to begin with. So there's no tires on, on the, like we were closed today because it was raining. There were, there were no tires out there. Hopefully, I mean, I'm sure some people went out and rode, but, but that's again with education. A lot of people just don't know. Like mm. growing up in Texas, we had tons of signs out that were like wet trails or closed trails or don't ride wet trails. And the local um, cycling association and mountain bike advocacy groups were big on trying to educate people. Um, and that we'll we'll just keep working on that. Like I think again with all of us, maybe be <laughs> the core group of us uh, who co-founded it. Um, we're foreigners and we all just kind of know you don't ride wet trails. And so right. we didn't really think about that, but we're working with a different demographic. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and ma- in some places you can ride wet trails, like you mentioned in Taiwan or yeah, people I know probably was like a raining day. Go, go. Yeah. Go. <laughs> well, there's bike yeah. parks in, in the UK, like they've got, um, rocky kind of shale hmm. tread surface. So erosion is not an issue and actually it gets grippier when it's wet because wow. it just washes off the top layer of dust. And so then you have mostly a rock surface to ride on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here, the soil type that we have, it's clay. So not only does it erode, but it also gets really slippery yeah. when it's wet um, and uh, leads to more crashes. And I don't know, yeah, there's a couple of reasons why. But yeah, uh, yeah education will, will fall into uh, kind of trail stewardship, conservation s- efforts like that. But also into mountain biking etiquette. So looking after the rider in front of you, sort of similar to skiing, the downhill rider has the right of way. Uh, for our green climbing trail, that's the one that allows hikers and, and mountain bikers to coexist. Normally, um, normally, uh, and like in the US, the trail etiquette is that um, mountain bikers yield to hikers. Mm. doesn't always happen that way. That's like the, the rule is supposed to be that way, but a lot of hikers will just step aside. It's e- easy enough and they choose to, but the, the typical etiquette is that a hiker or a trail runner has the right of way. The foot traffic takes the right of way. Um, ours is a bit different because we're building mountain biking trails and yeah, we want, we want to welcome biker. these people into mm-hmm. our bike park, but there's already so many other hiking and running trails that they can enjoy that are maybe a bit too technical for mountain bikers. Um, so we're allowing them access to that. And also, uh, another big, another big one, no matter where you're listening, this should be the, the case. Typically the uphill rider has the right of way. Mm. So, um, sorry, the, the rider traveling uphill. So if you're biking, if you're climbing, it's so much harder for you to get started yeah. than it is for a downhill rider to stop and start again or a hiker or trail runner. The same doesn't really matter. Uh, and we have that rule as well, but, okay. um, that's also just kind of baked into it because hikers, well, mountain bikers can only go uphill on that trail and mm-hmm. hikers and, and runners are supposed to yield anyway. So that, yeah, we've got a lot of different initiatives that we'll, we'll have to be working on. Um, How do they know all this information if they're coming from overseas? So that's a good question. So we're working on getting a lot of this information out on our Instagram and our Facebook. Um, again, I've also, all of us being volunteer, if we had infinite time <laughs> or, or even just a little bit more time, we would have big sections up on our website that talk about riding wet trails and like a whole trail etiquette education area. Mm. Um, we'll get there eventually. 
we don't have it now. Just again, there's only so many things we can do in a yeah. day and we have to pick and choose priorities. Yeah. And don't forget they all have their full-time job. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, we'll work on the education. Yeah. We've got our website and it's uh, namba.ngo. And there you can see some information on the bike park. And hopefully, you know, if you're listening to this in a year, a year from now or two years from now, for some reason, or 50 <laughs> years from now, hopefully um, there will be 50 something. years, 50 <laughs> years. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, if you're listening to this in the future, hopefully we already have this up, but uh, yeah, it, it, education will be a big part of what we try and do both. Yeah. Again, it's all about building trails and community and how do we building community also requires some level of education, just like it does in, in a more traditional sense, like children are part of the community and they're educated. Mountain bikers are part of the community. They'll be educated as we welcome to the sport. Yeah, I'm really happy. And I hope like a lot of people who love mountain biking in Taiwan listen to this episode and they can learn a little bit about this. Come ride. Yeah, we'll have some stuff on our Instagram. I've got some information already written and drafted about wet trails. We've already put one post up or two posts up, I think. But that'll be a continuous project. It's just taking photos of the issue. Yeah. Because then we can show like the best tool is visual for a lot of people. So if we show like, oh, well, by riding wet trails, this section that did look like this now has a big puddle and ruts in it. Um, if we if we could all just wait 24 hours after rain or 48 hours after rain, mm. then maybe this wouldn't happen. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not necessarily that we get frustrated by any of this, but it's just, we just need to work on Because how can we be frustrated if someone doesn't know any better? Like, mm. it's not like they're going out and be like, oh, I know the rule, but I don't I'm care. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I only think about me. But they're just like, oh, cool, awesome trails. And that's yeah. that's that's so cool because people want to be riding the stuff we've been working on. That, yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> um, but we also don't want it to get damaged. We want people to enjoy this next year and 10 years from now with yeah. minimal maintenance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> minimal maintenance. Min minimal maintenance cost. Right. Uh, If people who has ride that trails, something they want to talk about, how where should they find you? Just uh, so we have um, email or our website. We've got like a contact form. Uh, generally for trails, like there's a service that's pretty popular in the U.S. and Canada and Europe and a lot of the West. That's called Trail Forks, uh, and yeah. it's a um, you can add uh, trail reports where you can say, oh, today the condition was wet or muddy or really tacky, great, dry, too dry, whatever. Or today there's a tree that fell here. You can take a photo of that and post it, post the location. Right. Um, so people can post uh, the conditions on the day they rode there, but they can also give us feedback. They can rate the trails and that type of stuff. Uh, but probably for more general stuff like, hey, I did this and it would be awesome if you had that, you know, X, Y, and Z, if you could add these three things, it'd improve the experience a lot send us an email um probably the best way i think it's info at namba.ngo be the yeah. email for that cool uh but yeah that's on our website um we do receive people that you know contact us on instagram as well asking questions Ooh. um which is which is nice but email is probably the for for more like feedback that type of that type of stuff or ideas is probably best to go with an email rather than instagram instagram's like hey i i don't understand the parking issue like where do i park uh, and like that type of thing questions they want to solve and, and for that type of stuff again they're working on education where hopefully people don't send us those messages where they, they can find <laughs> all the information they need yeah um and what about google map do you put the pin on yep. that part already? Yeah, and we're people on. Can they do the review? We're on, on Google, Google Maps. Maps. We have uh, last time I checked, maybe it's twelve five star reviews. And because Taiwanese love Google reviews. All right, <laughs> jump on uh, everyone. Jump on our Google Maps. Give us five stars. <laughs> yeah, I would do that. I can put a photo. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're on Google Maps um, under Twin Peaks Bike Park. Uh, if you search it, you'll find it. Or if you kind of pinch and zoom. Um, near the resort uh you'll find it oh yeah there is it's got our hours and everything like that so technically because of our our rental contract we're open from 7 a.m to 7 p.m yeah it says like open every day but you better check their instagram for the update yeah generally it's open i mean it's public land but we're renting it so we can yeah. kind of control access as a result but yeah our instagram and trail forks we try to update that and say whether or not it's open or closed based off conditions. Ultimately, you know, in a perfect world, people would just 
see the trail and be like, oh, it's wet. I shouldn't ride. And yeah. we wouldn't necessarily make that decision for them. They would just be the perfect trail user and they would know. Oh, yeah, I'm just looking at little kids riding the same trails as me. Oh yeah, my God, so many, that's so many good picks up there. We also have uh, t-shirts for sale on, uh, our, really? on there now. Yeah, I added, I added t-shirts so you can see merch. Oh, that's true. Actually, that's also on our website. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, our Google, Google Maps, we've got... Um, uh, yeah, photos and videos from people, reviews from people. Um, it's a good way to actually see what the bike park looks like because it's not us just managing. It's not because I do our social media. It's not just what I want people to see. It's it's the reality of it. And so far, everyone is uh, really stoked. Looking, there's all five star reviews, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, photos of happy people out on the trails. It's a good way to understand the atmosphere, the vibe, the location. You really do the successful park. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's my baby. It's all of our babies. It's <laughs> yeah. the co-founders. Your first it's, baby. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'm so emotional. Maybe it's the beer. <laughs> <laughs> You've only had like a half. I know. <laughs> half, half of half. Half of half of a beer. Yeah. Um, I think the last question yep. is for um, Taiwanese who... Hello, people in Taiwan. <laughs> After hearing all those um, inspiring stories, yep. how do you think one person who has this in mind, like, oh, I also want to build something in Taiwan, yep. what would you suggest them to do? Um, if, if that one is you. I think the way that we have gone about this and forming a nonprofit is big. Um, so in doing so, you can get other businesses to support you you can it's more easy to to show that you're trying to do something that's not just putting money in your pocket mm. you're trying to build something beyond yourself uh and beyond your you own think income that's the key point. i think that's a big point um mm. uh, another big part is just relationship building is huge so getting out and talking with landowners talking with um other people in your community and getting a passionate group of people that want to do something. Uh, and also just not taking no for an answer kind of as well. It's not that, you know, of course we've, we've had people say no to things, but we just think about like, well, they said no because of this. So if we change that and then maybe we can get them to say yes. And so it's, it's been this long process of like, okay, we, we've encountered this, we've encountered this barrier how do we approach, how do we get around this? Uh, and also it's, it's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to say like, it's, it's daunting. I don't, I don't, I didn't probably, you know, two and a half years ago when we were talking about this to begin with, I don't know if I understood how much or two years ago, if I didn't, if I knew how much work this was going to be. Are you a regret? No, oh. not at all. Not um, at all. None of it has felt like work because right. okay, I'm passionate about it. But yeah, if you're not passionate, um, Maybe you don't want to have a meeting until 10 30 PM <laughs> or 11 PM. <laughs> uh, cause we all have job. We have day, day jobs True. sometimes before big events or when you have big issues we're trying to yeah. resolve. And you know, some people have wives and kids and wow. they wait for their kids to go to sleep at like Imagine 8 PM families. and we start, we start a meeting at eight 30 and it goes until 11 or something like that. Uh, wow. so how you be committed to something. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, be ready to commit, but it, that's also why it's so exciting is because, you know, if, if you put a lot of work into something and it succeeds, it just feels that much better. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think, I think community building, uh, and that's also has to be a sponsorship, um, or funding. Like if you can build, build community, build, uh, relationships with people in the government, uh, that have the same vision as you, or if you can help them by speaking with them, you can t teach them your vision mm -hmm. and maybe bring them aboard. That's huge. Cause then you have public funding, but if you can't get that, then, um, private funding, talk with bike brands, talk with, um, local businesses that want to support their, their local community, uh, and see if you can get funding to that. Funding is a big part. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's hard to say in a in a in a few words about the process, but um, I think you tried everything. Just just yeah, be be ready to just keep going. <laughs> just <laughs> in short, they're gonna be they're gonna be so many times where it you're gonna bump into stuff and it's discouraging. Um, but just keep going, like 
what are you going to do? Like it, it, yeah. at the end of the day, you're talking about bikes and bike trails. It should be fun. Yeah. Um, so just keep going, like keep thinking about riding your bike. Cause that's what keeps you motivated. Like, Oh, you know, in two years from now or five years from now, we could be riding this and other people could be riding this too. Like, it's not just about you, but like think about the outcome and just keep focusing on that goal. You'll find ways to get there. And I, with us, it's been also about spreading the workload. So we have, again, that core group of, of six co-founders, but we have 24 board members. Yeah. That's a lot of people. Um, and we can engage these people and these people can work on stuff when, you know, when someone else is really busy, like when someone else's family's in town or, you know, we've got people have had babies recently or whatever, and, and we're able to spread the workload across other people and rely on other people's expertise. Like not one person, one person can't do this all. Um, and I also so. believe that if there are so many people, I mean, 24 is too crazy communication to, you know, focus on the same thing, mm -hmm. have the same vision. It's hard. Yep. Even five, not to say 24. <laughs> I think yeah, with the, with that, like, there's, again, there's like a, there's a core group that's maybe active every single day with this stuff, but with the 24, um, you know, we were lucky to find people, uh, you know, that, that believe in us. Maybe they don't necessarily understand the full vision or maybe they do depending on it. It depends on the person, but maybe they just want to support us. Like yeah. however they can help, they, they believe in something. They believe in something that they, whatever understanding of Namba they have, they believe in it or they see how it could be something. And, um, they are trusting in, in the group that we have. And as a result, they're kind of happy to support whatever, what they, they trust our judgment. Like, well, we want to do this. We think this is the best outcome. And, it, and then, and then they're, they're enough on the inside of things where they can provide very good feedback but they're not so in it where they have their own strong opinion on something. They can look at something a couple steps away and say, like, well, wouldn't it be better if we did this? But because like, you know, I might be so focused on what's right in front of me that I don't see the big picture, yeah. but these people that are within the organization that aren't doing things every single day, they can pop in and be like, huh, well, I, I noticed you did that. Maybe doing this would be better. And that's awesome feedback. So yeah, um, yeah reach out seek criticism, f constructive criticism, people that, uh, want to see you succeed <laughs> and, and, and help, help bring them aboard. It's, it's, it's really hard to, uh, maybe say an easy way for this to happen. Um, but ultimately it's about yeah winning over your town or a uh, local landowner or something like that to get access to an area. There's a lot of, um, videos on YouTube. <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, we just, we just watched a tutorial on YouTube about how to build a, a giant bike park and, um, did you No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, guys, look at that link. Step down below. 278. Yeah. <laughs> we should probably just start with that. How to make a massive nonprofit organization, bike park, da, 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 and like, yeah, it's going to be huge. But I, well, on that note though, like there are so many other projects that have succeeded before us like we're learning we're doing we're, we're copying other people's homework we're like how did whistler succeed or how did mm. this town in america succeed or that one succeed we don't need to we don't need to reinvent everything but you learn them but, but we not but copy from we them. learn from them and then we localize it how do we yeah, uh, it's very take important. some of these concepts and make it work here there's a lot of things that are unique to our situation and that's where we can't just be like oh whistler did this let's do that exact same thing because we can't but um yeah i think uh, actually Ignore everything I've said before this in terms of how to make something like Namba happen. Look at other projects. Look at projects that are 10 or 15 years in. Um, see what they did. See what they're doing now. And learn from that. Copy it <laughs> uh, as best but you can. It. Yeah, copy it and make it, make it work for your own environment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for that very professional um, recommendation and suggestion and the like, guide. YouTube guide. tutorials. Yeah. <laughs> Wiki how. Yeah, I'm gonna like just cut those little part and then put that subtitle. Wiki how. how. To. Yeah. Wiki how. How to build a giant bike park. Okay, so thank you so much. Yeah. Miles. I'm just so glad that before I fly back to Taiwan and get to come here and talk about the story behind. Yeah. Do you have any uh, final feedback for, for us? Like what would you... 
what would you want to to see or what are you most excited about with Twin Peaks in the future? Like you, cause we had a bit of a chat before this, right? Yeah. And you've, you've brought a lot of this up in the podcast so far, but um, yeah. What, what from both what the listeners have heard now, but also from the, the chat in the coffee shop, what are you like? Oh, I hope that happens or I want, or even things that maybe I haven't said, like, what do you want to see here? Yeah. So for me, I'm more like uh, rather than downhill biker, I'm more like cross country. Mm-hmm. And um, one thing I find it very fascinating with like the long um, cross country, which you can have probably like two days yeah, mountain it's my bike trail dream. Yeah. and to have like the mountain hut that you can stay overnight in the middle of the mm-hmm. mountain and you enjoy the view in the morning and then you continue riding to another mountains. That would be, wow, something I haven't tried and There's I've heard. I know of. There's already a hut uh, between here and Sapporo. That's, Ooh. yeah, it's, it's all, it's all in my, it's all, it's in all in my dream. Okay. Then yeah. I need to push you like yeah. every day, ask you when is that going to happen? <laughs> yeah. That would be like something that I would really, multi-day really day looking bike packing. For. Yeah. Mm. Multi-day bike packing on the single track. Yeah, yeah. In the single track. Yeah. That would be so cool and so stoked. Yeah. And yeah, please make it happen. <laughs> Sorry for hijacking your podcast. I'll give uh, you, I'll give no you the problem. keys back. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay so thank you so much <laughs> now i'm taking over my podcast again thank you so much miles for coming to be out there and sharing all your knowledge information and everything everyone whoever yeah the whole namba team not just yeah i'm just yeah. one person namba is a lot bigger than me yeah i'm just one tiny person in this 24 person team but yeah little tiny person with a big dream and take action is it's something yeah so thank you so much and yeah. thank you everyone who involved in this bike park we i really have a great time there and i'm really looking forward to the next time to come back and ride it again how do i say be outer in chinese again oh xian bai zhi meng xian bai zhi meng yeah <laughs> uh, and I, it was better earlier i think yeah. I, I made an attempt before but, but that was good enough because it's five words it's hard five words yeah, that's five words. Really? English, it's like be outer. It's just two words, right? Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank thanks you. for listening. Cheers, if you, everybody. Yeah. If you have any questions, um, please email or message Miles. Follow us at Niseko MTB and at Twin Peaks Bike Park on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> All that All stuff. All the links <laughs> is down below. Sick. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Adios. Adios. <laughs> 谢谢大家今天的收听利用这一个特点台湾会有不一样的发展目标如果你还没有收听的朋友呢可以听听我们的第五十二集而就在上个周六 来进行经验的分享，那其中他们就有分享像新加坡啊，或者是香港的案例来给大家参考。如果大家想要知道当天超级精彩的研讨会内容的话呢，你可以在我们这个节目的介绍里面找到相关的链接。那不知道大家觉